Hello everyone, this is Ray Space. In the comments to the video on the new airship part I made for Hooligan Labs airships in Kerbal Space Program, Martian Lemon asked, is the airship to orbit concept possible in the KSP? And that's a good question. Let us first take a look at the airship to orbit concept itself. And uh, the primary purveyor of this particular concept is JP Aerospace that we see here. Airship to orbit is where you have an airship get really high in the atmosphere and then use really low thrust engines like electric thrusters, ion engines and stuff like that to very slowly make orbit using the airship. And so it needs to have very low aerodynamic drag and this is the shape that they came up with for that. But wouldn't it be better if it was all in one row? Does it have to be a V? I'm not sure because like if you put a lot of ion thrusters at the tail end then do you have a straight thing wouldn't that have less drag anyway oh, or it could get lift like this I'm not sure so what they say is if you want to get to space you climb to the top okay that's how we normally do it uh, so here they want to get to the top of the atmosphere then the craft sl slowly accelerates and that's including the airship part otherwise well, you're going to go down. Uh, slowly accelerates using electric or chemical hybrid rocket engines over days until it reaches orbital velocity. So uh, our big problem here is as you gain velocity horizontally, you're going to get lots more drag. And the drag goes up by the square of your velocity. So that's troublesome. And what they say is for an airship to fly at the edge of space, it will need to be big over a mile long so that's way longer than the airship that i made and it would also need though we could scale it up though it would also need to be very light a gossamer hypersonic airship such a vehicle is not suited for flight in lower atmosphere no kidding uh, so that's why they have a first stage airship and then the orbital airship uh, okay and then the first stage airship has to go all the way to 140,000 feet so that's close to halfway to space. And then there it will dock with a way station floating at the top of the atmosphere. Cargo and crew then transfer to a large orbital airship for a nine day journey to orbit. This enormous undertaking, it require, I, it's not clear what the payload of the orbital airship is gonna be. It requires developments in hypersonics. I mean, I guess that's because it's technically going fast in the atmosphere really high up. Plasma rocket engines, we'll talk about the plasma, I mean, they're, they're calling it a rocket engine, but it's it's a, a, an electric chemical hybrid rocket engine is a interesting question what that means. Active drag reduction and more, it needs a great deal of experience operating in the up, up, upper atmosphere. Not idle speculation. Well, it's not idle because they're building balloons, I suppose, or airships. Okay, airships. Uh, so, of course, this whole thing is crazy. Okay, well, they have a over 40-year project. And, well, our question is not whether it can be really done. Our question is whether it can be done in Kerbal. So, let's take a look at that situation. Obviously, we do not have the full scope of what they're talking about there and I don't have a nice v-shaped thing I have the airship part that I made before and then here I have a thruster unit now you can see it's suspended below this and I don't know how we're going to deal with the fact that the thrust is going to be going down here but the reason it's suspended below it is because of a fault in the design I used for this cloud, a Venus cloud-based envelope in that the flaps on the side of it actually deploy uh, and deploy downward. So uh, if we don't suspend it really low, the flaps are going to clip into the payload. So, uh, well, I mean, it, it probably doesn't have to be this low. Maybe, maybe we can get by with like, because it's at an angle, right? But then we'll have to see. Maybe it needs to be lower than that. So basically, yeah, I did not design it for this purpose. The idea of the original cloud base would be that the thing would be straight down and not have these things on the side, basically. Um, 
but we need the the radiators because oh well i mean it does have i could turn these flaps into radiators and then we wouldn't need these radiators and then it'd work out a little bit easier but the reason we need the radiators is because we have two nuclear power units here and one thing they didn't have in their design apparently is how exactly they were going to power their thrusters we have pulsed inductive thrusters and these get a nice 19.6 newtons of thrust at 6000 isp with liquid ammonium uh, or ammonia and these are very uh, upscaled versions of a real thing this is a real pulsed inductive thruster nupit and so nupit uh, can deliver this kind of thrust at this scale and it would take nuclear reactors in order to power it. We've got the radiators so that we stay cool-ish and well let's see what happens. So let's just take it outside and see what happens here. We don't really have control control as such so that's a bit of a worry but I, I want to see whether we can change our orbit at all in the end. I should probably put a reaction wheel on somewhere. That would help. Now let's take a look if I need it or not. Okay, so we are going to increase the buoyancy. Now we are a lot lighter, so here's how the flaps are. I guess I could rotate that so that those are in between the flap area and then we could bring it in a bit. Let's just go with this for now. Okay, now we have buoyancy. Well, I don't need the pulse inductive thrusters yet. Now they have a burn time of 48 days, not 6 days. Now we should be able to get much higher than the design payload that I made for this. The design payload was 120 tons. We are only 31 tons right now. So that means we should go 4 times higher, but that's not high enough. Uh, we'll we'll just go there. So that's where their gossamer thing comes in. You see, um, the dry mass of this envelope is heavy enough that even if it didn't have any payload at all, it wouldn't be able to go high enough. But we'll see how high we can get. Now, the easier option, of course, to use this to get to orbit is to just suspend a rocket underneath it, right? I mean, not something that takes many days in order to apply the thrust to get to orbit, but something that would take a fraction of the time, well, a few minutes. That would be better. I have another control unit here. If I control from here, we see that what I've packed here for the pulse inductive thrusters is... 8,556 meters per second and that is what we have. So that's how much we get out of the liquid ammonia. But hey, uh, let's see how these work at all. Can we go in a direction? Now I don't know if Pekka's warp thrust mod works in the actual atmosphere. We've actually got a duplicate on these engines for some reason. I'll have to check on that. So, practically speaking, I'm not going to be able to get to orbit if it doesn't. Right now we have that much drag, 80 kilonewtons, and we have 52 newtons of thrust. And we're not going to be able to go too much higher than this. And we haven't even started getting substantial horizontal speed. Now, the drag is probably just us going up, so it's dragging this direction. But we need that drag lower than the thrust in the horizontal direction in order to make any headway. I mean, our horizontal speed seems to be going down, which is good because we're currently going backwards here. So it occurs to me belatedly that we can't actually use full time warp in the atmosphere anyway, unless better time warp might change that. But 
we can only go to 4x time warp in the atmosphere. So we can't use Pekka's mod in order to give ourselves the full time warp thrust. In any case, we're leveling out at a little bit under 18 kilometers. And right here, the static pressure from the atmosphere is still too much for our little pulsed inductive thrusters to overcome. Uh, we have 324 newtons of drag against us and that's varying as we sort of bobble up and down but we only have 54 newtons of thrust. So now if we made it pointier like a normal airship would be instead of a cloud city sort of arrangement that might be helpful but it probably won't cut our drag by that much and even if it did, then once we started moving in the direction of motion, we would be getting more drag. That would be thanks to the dynamic pressure. And right now we have no dynamic pressure because we have no velocity to speak of. But once we started going at, if we could ever get to a thousand meters per second, we would get a lot more dynamic pressure. So this is why they say, oh, it has to be a mile long. It has to be gossamer thin. It has to be all these other things. Could I make a part that did that? It's possible, but with the ion engines, given the time warp restriction, uh, unless we can do full time warp in the atmosphere, you'd still be having a pinch in that you can't let it keep going for even six days, much less 48. So. That is the situation with Airship to Orbit. Is it, is it the game's fault that we can't do it? Uh, only insofar as the time warp is the problem. Uh, if we can solve the time warp problem, then theoretically I can make a part that could test it as long as their numbers aren't completely incorrect. In other words, I could make it arbitrarily light. Uh, and then see, but I have a suspicion that there's no gas that we could put in there that would be light enough to get us high enough in the atmosphere to make this work out at high velocity. So as we go faster, we get more drag, and then we still need something that is going to, well, I guess with the additional drag, that means there's more particles and so they'll be lift and of course that's why they've shaped their balloons like that. It's tough to figure out whether Kerbal can simulate that part of it if that's what's going on. They didn't explain all the details and if that's what's going on then maybe it's possible to have a dynamic going on that Kerbal doesn't capture. But Anyway, could I make the part? Yeah, even if it's a mile long, I can make the part. Uh, but the time warp is a thing, and what's going on as we get faster and really high up is also a problem. For now, I can't answer anything. We are not going anywhere. Our surface horizontal speed has sort of stopped. Uh, we, we aren't making any change to that particularly. And we've stopped in midair, more or less. And so no progress is being made with this contraption. And we'll have to try something else. Am I going to make that version? Um, only if I can fix a time warp issue. Maybe better time warp can allow us to use real time warp in the atmosphere. I'll have to check. I'm not sure. But then we have other physical issues to overcome. So... With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.